Oh my God, hi, I'm here. I'm here, I know I'm a minute or so late. Hope you're doing well. Welcome guys to my weekly Facebook Live show. I'm Jen Burson. I'm the founder of Generation PR and the creator of the Profitable PR Pros community where you may be watching this live. I go live every single week on Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific unless I'm out of town or something else is happening. So with that being said, a little programming note, I wanted to let you know that I will be out. Um, well, next week's live is actually going to be um, kind of not happening at the normal time because we are having our live crickets to crushing it webinar. I'll be teaching it live. Hi, Gail. Um, so instead of the weekly Facebook live, come join me for, hi, Nelson, you guys, um, come join me for this. I'm going to drop a link here, uh, crickets to crushing it. So I'm going to be hosting this live webinar free, totally free. Come and join us. Hi, Sylvia. Um, you're in Mexico. Yeah. Is that right? I'm trying to remember where you are. I don't know if I know actually, I hope I didn't get that wrong. Um, Okay, so there's that. Next week, I will not be live at 11. I will be doing this live webinar on March 31st. Also happens to be my son's 12th birthday, my older son. And then April 7th and April 14th, I am not going to be going live because, hi, Jenny, because uh, my kid's spring break. Uh, Mission Viejo. Okay, no, I'm totally wrong. Okay. We have some OC people, regulars, that'll be joining us for this, I'm sure. Thank you for joining, you guys. Um, so uh, the next live, hi, Kelly, uh, will be April 21st. And then back to regular schedule. I always say I go live every week, but April's a little wonky with the kids' spring break, and we are doing this live webinar. So join me for that. Um, I dropped the link here. And um, just welcome, you guys. Uh, thank you for joining us live. Um, I love this discussion about editorial calendars. We just had our monthly pitch lab call yesterday. Is there a dog under here? No. We had a monthly uh, pitch lab coaching call yesterday. It was very good. Um, several of you on here were on the call. Uh, Kelly Nelson, um, I get so much out of those calls. I think that we have some incredibly smart people in, in our community and in these programs on these calls, and we get so many different perspectives from people. So I love when we have uh, questions and people join to share their perspectives because we get so many um, bits of strategic advice that honestly couldn't just come from one person. They come from people with varied experience, varied background. Kelly's a former journalist. Nelson's been working in PR since 1990. Like we have so many different people that are sharing their expertise. And that is what I love so much about this community. Um, I'm just gonna say really quickly that um, I, am, I am always looking for ways to, to, my goal for you is to bring you the best community, the best programs, coaching. The goal is to help you make money on your terms, make money doing what you love, um, find clients, and have a career around the kind of life you want to have. Um, and I have something really cool in the works that is about to close um, that I'm excited to share and hopefully next week. I know we've been kind of teasing it, um, not to be coy, but I'm under NDA. And then as soon as we have the ability, we will let you know. But the goal is to expand 82, your own business since 99. Okay, sorry that I flubbed that a little bit. But either way, I think we all get the idea that we have some very seasoned veterans here offering their strategic guidance. Um, and community is so important. Um, anytime I can create more collaborative environment and offer you more resources, all of the above, um, I'm going to do it. So working on something really big, I'm very excited about. 
and I will let you guys know. Oh, someone else in. Okay, cool. Um, I'll let you guys know what happens. I'm very excited. Ah, it's a big deal. Okay, so today's topic, I'm um, really uh, looking forward to chatting about, and actually it was suggested by Natasha. Uh, you guys who are regulars here know Natasha. She's in all of our programs, and she's very um, help, helpful to our community, always sharing advice, um, sharing resources. Uh, are you kidding me, Sylvia? <laughs> Sylvia, are you joking? Um, that's what I am. <laughs> I'm a PR mentor. I have any possible thing you could be looking to learn. We have it for you at every possible level. So uh, if you have any questions about what we can do to support you, um, here's a link to the site. And then you can go to, actually, you know what, I'm going to plug it in and let you know where to go exactly. So, and you can even like take the quiz and figure out what you need. But if you go to our programs, you can see the roadmap. Uh uh, reach out to my team. So go there. Um, you know, we also do, I do one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we have the Agency Accelerator Plus where we get on and do coaching calls. We have the Pitch Lab. There's so many ways. Um, yeah, so just uh, keep that in mind. But I was like, you're looking for a mentor. That's what I'm here for. So um, this topic was suggested by Natasha and she wanted to kind of dive in about how we can use editorial calendars to the advantage of our clients um, and, you know, how we can leverage, obviously, one of the great resources that we provide inside the Pitch Lab, but just some general advice how to do it. So what even is an editorial calendar? Uh, let me just rearrange here so I can see my notes. Um, so we know that the media plans ahead, any kind of publication, any journalist, blogger, any publisher, podcaster, anyone who is creating content consistently on a platform, they plan ahead for the content that they're going to create. And if you're doing social media content for clients, you know you're planning ahead as well. And obviously, when it comes to pitching and pitch angles for your clients, when we're working on journalists' lead times, short and long lead publications are working on different things at different times, but always in advance of when they're going to run in their publication. So for traditional and digital publishing, um, sometimes these media outlets will publish their editorial calendars for the whole year. And it's usually um, for advertisers. So they are accessible to anyone who's interested. You may have to ask for them. You may have to dive a little deep on their site and download them. But what the purpose of them typically is for is to let them share upcoming content themes with advertisers, okay? Um, they want your money. They want your client's money. Usually, you know, if you pitch editorial, they're going to be like, great, and they'll send you over to advertising a lot of the time. But we, um, as PR pros, can use this to our advantage as well. So while most of these editorial calendars aren't geared towards us, we can still use them to help strategize creative, tailored pitches to particular themes that these outlets in your niche are actually looking for. So... If you use it the right way, you'll be able to build out a comprehensive pitching strategy, like your overall media outreach strategy that's focused on both short and long lead pitch angles. Um, and just to kind of, we all know, but just a little refresher, standard lead time for the majority of print editions is three to six months, I'd say probably four months working ahead, you're going to be um, pretty safe. And that means you should start pitching relevant angles for a long lead well before, you know, like four or so months before the publica publication date at the very least. Um, and then uh, 
online lead times are considered short leads and they're um, better at servicing breaking news, a lot of quick content that comes up, um, you know, multiple times a week they're publishing, even sometimes multiple times a day, they're publishing content. Um, so they can, you know, be available to you if you don't have as much of a runway. But you may find sometimes if you're too early, kind of wait a minute and then, um, you know, pitch closer, but um, it's better to not be late and miss the opportunity to impact headlines with your client's content. So it, you know, just know that short lead is like six months, six weeks to three weeks. Um, if you pitch earlier than that, because you're like, that's on my mind. I just pitched long lead. I'm ready to pitch short. Um, you may have to follow up closer to when you want it to actually run or when it's the right fit in terms of timing. With editorial calendars, you'll know what to prioritize in terms of pitching and when to pitch it in order to land these strategic top tier press features for your clients that they're looking for. So it's taking what we know the media happens to be working on, and maybe it's not very detailed. Sometimes it might just be like one word that'll um, fall fashion, you know, or something like that. And they're just like, what is that? What are they working on? I don't even know. But you know that like September is going to be a big fall fashion issue and you can align your fashion or um, accessory, jewelry, lifestyle clients, footwear clients, whatever, with the timing of that, you know thinking about what they've written in the past or what they may be considering in terms of trends moving forward. Maybe you have access to trend reports. Um, but all of this sounds great and awesome, but when it comes to using P uh, editorial calendars as a PR pro, finding and pulling the dates from every single relevant publication's editorial calendars for the whole year is a lot to handle. Um, and I know that from experience because that's what we're doing to pull together these um, content calendars that we're presenting to you. So I'll get to that in a minute. But um, it's doable, but it's a lot of time and research. So you want to find the editorial calendars of each publication that you're targeting for pitching. So there you're probably going to need to look at the advertising section of the publication or the footer of the website. Maybe you have a contact there that you can reach out to and request it on behalf of your clients. <clears throat> when that happens, <clears throat> they might semi-harass you now that they know that you're interested or believe you're interested in advertising. They're going to come to you and say, hey, we saw you were interested in advertising because you're going to have to give your email address. And all of that is fine. But it's curating that and pulling it and um, like basically taking what you need um, for every single publication that you're interested in reaching for your clients. So if you and when you get those, you want to note any um, pu relevant publication dates and issue dates. So sometimes it's monthly, sometimes it's quarterly, biannual, when they'll say when the issue um, date is going to be released and then also when the close date is. And keep in mind, this is for advertisers. So close date means that the advertisers are presenting final artwork. Um, Elaine, this is a great recommendation. You can search the name of the publication and media kit. I do this all the time. <clears throat> That's a really good recommendation. And then you get their media kits or it could be like, yeah, it usually says media kit, but it's essentially for advertisers. Um, and then you're going to look at a lot of times, hello, Natasha. I don't know why your picture's not there, but hello, friends. I was actually telling our wonderful audience that this topic about using editorial calendars actually came from you. I do not remember when you asked about it um, uh, a while ago. Anyway, um, I think this is a really good topic for seasoned pros and beginners alike. Sometimes as seasoned pros, we tend to take these um, resources that are available to us and kind of overlook them because you're like, I know 
you know, typically what, you know, usually publications are on an annual cycle and they do the same stuff year over year, but it is a really good refresher. I love Elaine's approach of searching the publication name and media kit. Um, so where did I go? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. I scrolled down and I missed my notes. Okay, here we go. And so, blah, 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 blah. Um, so you're going to look at any relevant publication dates and issue dates, and essentially it'll say like close date. That means if you're an advertiser, you're getting them final artwork. You know, you've signed the insertion order. It's like they're saving a page for you. And typically you're designing the ad. Your clients are designing the ad. Not us. I don't do print advertising, um, and I don't think you should either. But, um, you know, advertisers are going to supply... Okay, just wait, Natasha. I love it too. Um, it is a great way to supply, um, or it's uh, blah, blah, blah. The uh, advertisers are going to supply the publications with the art. So keep in mind, that's like close date, get us your art. PR, it's going to take longer for an editor to consider a story for that publication. So don't look at the close date, like the actual date you need to um, pitch. You need to pitch well in advance of that. Because that means the issue, the content is already way established. And that's the close date for, for advertisers. So I don't want you to be confused about that date. But note any relevant publication dates when the issues are happening. And then calculate when you should begin pitching based on those listed publication dates. And that's working backwards from those lead times we suggested, which means you're building in time to craft the pitch, you're building in time to pull your media contacts so you have a pitch list um, and you know timing-wise when you're going to send that. And you have time for back and forth, maybe there's a sample send or there's an interview or something that's sort of a, a longer um, runway to actually secure those, those placements. So you have all of this information for the publications you're pulling, and then you can transfer those notes and dates onto your personalized editorial calendar. And you can create one of these in Google Calendar so your whole team can actually collaborate on it, and maybe even the client can see it. Um, maybe there's certain content that you're not necessarily giving the client access to, but you're letting them, them know in general the themes that you're pitching and when. Um, and it can be anything you want. And, you know, there's no rules here. It's whatever works for you. But I really love a Google Calendar because I love the idea of collaboration with the team. And we all have visibility to what each other is doing and when. Um, so that's how you can do it on your own. And I love Elaine's approach. You guys remember, search the name of the publication and media kit. But of course, we have a much easier way. So think about it. Like, what if you were able to get a seamless short lead and long lead editorial calendar with tons of publications? Guess where I'm going with this? All wrapped up inside a guide that also gives you pitch angles, seasonal tricks, seasonal approaches, tips for how to leverage holidays. Um, social media content ideas, all of the things. So um, that's what Natasha is actually referencing here. Um, ha so I always recommend this. The execution plans are what we pull all of this together into inside the pitch lab. So um, every single month you get one well in advance of the month, so about two weeks in advance, and you get this huge document, I think the last one we sent out for uh, April, because we already issued April a couple weeks or a week ago, it's, I think the last one was 54 or so pages. It's this huge document and it's there to save you so much time. So you know exactly what to pitch, when, how to stay ahead of the game in terms of uh, content, calendars, lead times, what publications are working on, what are they looking for, what's happening each month. And what Natasha is saying is what I recommend as well, when you get on the phone for a discovery call and you're like dropping knowledge, um, it really does show clients that you're in the know, that you are familiar with their, um, 
their niche. So definitely mark up these editorial calendars. Um, you can print them and then use your highlighter and highlight certain publications during certain months that would be relevant to the client you're talking to and to all your clients. And as you're having this discovery call, you can say, oh, this is so wonderful. You're launching a product in September. Um, Allure is actually working on their best of beauty issue in September. And that is the perfect time to be reaching out and hopefully secure one of those coveted you know, award slots for you. Like super in the know and the potential client is going to be like, they know their stuff. Um, and then also when you are already on retainer, it is really helpful for strategic planning. So if you're going to plan your pitching um, topics, your angles, your short and long lead ideas for, let's say, three to six months, I don't want you taking any retainers, guys, if you can help it for less than six months. Three months is problematic. Any shorter than that, like a project, for sure 100% is going to be problematic because there's scope creep. Um, the guides are everything. Oh, I missed all of this. Natasha, what was that little? I live and die by Google calendars. Um, most monthly publications have a three month lead time. We're finding actually four month scale when it comes to like sample facilitation, especially if we have something we want somebody to have firsthand exper uh, experience using testing, trying it out and then giving a narrative review, a testimonial review about their experience with it. So we usually give about four months so that if there's a pro, like I have a, I have a breast pump, I have an LED face mask, um, I have a baby monitor, like a high tech baby monitor. We want our clients' um, products in their hands to test. And with the LED fa face mask, they need a month to use it and be like, okay, this is legit. So we have a little back and forth. Um, Kelly says, I love your monthly execution plans. I've used it and gotten press for clients because of knowing what to pitch from your plan. Those guides are everything. Yeah, they're, they're both in the pitch lab. I cannot believe, like, they're so good. And I say that because I'm not the one totally writing them. We have a whole team that are contributing, weighing in from all different um, niches and levels of experience. We have somebody that's um, considering um, diversity and inclusion. Um, you know, we're, we're coming at it from what's relevant now and what's timely and relevant for you to be pitching for short and long lead. Plus, we take all those editorial calendars and literally list the publication and what they're working on for long lead and then what they're working on for short lead. And it moves you through this timeline where you're just getting access to everything exactly when you need to be thinking about it. So we kind of do all the thinking and take out all the guesswork for you. Um, so we know, so it's like knowing what's happening each month and cueing your clients into that, building it into their strategies. So their strategies are going to be more targeted and more robust. So instead of like throwing darts and being like, I hope that someone would be considering talking about this right now, you can say, I know this publication will be featuring uh, topics around this subject at this time because I have the editorial calendar. But you don't have to pull it, call through it. We do all of that for you. So it's like, I mean, and it takes, takes a long time. So um, it's saving you so much time, you know, typically pulling content from editorial calendars will take hours each month or each quarter or year or whatever. It's super time consuming. And if you're only pulling things once a year or once every six months as you're planning, it's not going to be completely reliable. So our execution plans, the point of this is to say, um, she gets on calls, Natasha says, I have the, the guides on hand when I get on calls, um, you're able to just drop bombs, right? I, like, so you guys all know, and I said it at the top of the call, that my goal for you is to convert more business, to get the right kinds of clients in the door, to be super effective on your sales calls. All of this comes into play in what we teach inside the Agency Accelerator. It's one of the four pillars for growing a profitable agency strategy sales service scale this is the strategy plus the sales pillars the and these execution plans in the pitch lab will help you be incredibly effective doing just that 
Um, and I have an idea that I'm working on. It's a long-term, bigger vision idea. Um, and I've consulted to members that are here about the concept. We love the proof of concept. But that idea merging with the execution plans would be like lights out. Like, forget it. Fully booked. Pick your brain. Like, you'll see. Just wait. I'm so excited to share, hopefully soon. But um, the execution plans will save you time and effort and headaches by getting you all of the key information that you need to share with your clients or to be as effective as possible with your clients without you having to do any of the work other than just getting your ideas um, applied to the themes we're telling you about or the, the calendars and the timing and where to fit your clients into it. So um, that's one of the main things. Oh, yeah. And Jane says, um, I really use it for social media content for my clients, too. Yeah, there's a lot of um, those like small monthly holidays and um, relevant dates and birthdays and um, overall seasonal themes. Like there's a lot of stuff that just gets the wheels turning and will allow you a lot of runway to plan content uh, because again, we're not just giving you an April execution guide for stuff you should be pitching in April. It shows you long lead ideas. So you'll start to see, oh, okay, long lead. I should be thinking about this, which means you can plan for that four months in advance for your social media content. So there's a lot there. Um, so you don't just get the editorial calendars, but obviously in the program, we're there to train you, educate you, give you all of the ideas, the strategies that will really spark creative pitches and help you stay effective and on track for your clients. Um, and this is based on the premise that media converts, pitches convert when it is timely, relevant, strategic, targeted pitches to that publication. So this allows you to nail all those points, timely, targeted, strategic, all of that, it's there for you. And there's like master classes. Um, Natasha taught one about talk topics and um, positioning your clients as an authority in their space. People have been referencing that one um, and getting their clients basically like all of the ideas that they want to position their clients as an expert in their space or a thought leader or get their founder story out there. It's like pulling all of the great ideas out of your client without them even having to like really stress and struggle about what's the right thing to say. It's like getting every single possible thing they can be known for or talk about and having that available to you. Um, really great class. People have really enjoyed that. So um, anyway, so I'm excited about that. And actually, this is cool. What are we working on? Hmm. Um, we're working on a brand new resource where you can see an entire year of editorial calendars for all of the relevant publications, your favorite publications for your clients in one easy to access spot. And it'll be sorted by industry. Thumbs up or give me a heart if that would be a helpful resource to you. So rather than the editorial calendars coming just in the monthly execution plans, um, Natasha uses them for social too. Imagine a comprehensive resource. Okay, cool. Yes, lots of hearts. Yay. Love it. I think it's a great idea too. We also have like something super, super, super. Oh, hi, Allie. That's amazing. Something super awesome we're working on in terms of um, award submissions for your clients with training. Like this to me is an add-on service you could charge additional retainer for. Um we're going to work on training for that. That is so incredibly hard and time consuming <laughs> and it'll be, have to be a work in progress. We've been working on it for more than a year, but finding all of these awards and all of these spaces has been crazy, crazy hard, but we're going to train you on submitting awards. Um, uh, it's not as simple as you think, and there are nuances to it. Um, and actually pitching my own business for industry awards, once we started employing this very specific strategy for how to do it, can you even see? I can't, I don't know. I have like all of a sudden we're, we're winning the awards we're submitting to. Um, so we're going to share strategies and approach. And the goal is to give you an additional service that you can charge 
more retainer for to submit your clients for awards. Um, so that's coming, but we are going to have all of these publications sorted by industry all in one place for a year. And that way you can plan out an entire year's worth of pitching strategy for clients in advance. Um, obviously, you'll be adding in changes from your clients, launches once they know about them, but it is a great framework so you can see and let them know, hey, we're gonna be working on this. Um, can you let us know the products or the programs or whatever you have that's the right fit for this? And you'll have the runway to be, um, instead of being reactive with your clients telling you, oh, by the way, we're doing this, you're gonna be proactive and know in advance what you need from them and when. It'll keep you and your team on track. It'll keep you guys ahead of the game. Um, and I'll be sharing more about this brand new resource in the live masterclass next week. It's totally free. Like I said, it's called Crickets to Crushing It. I haven't taught it live in well over a year. Um, so I'm excited because I, I think it's a really good one. I think it's very informative. Um, I think it'll be, did that go? Why didn't that go? There we go. I think it'll be a good use of your time. Um, so yeah, and I know several of you uh, signed up to, to attend, but um, I'm excited about this new resource. It's like, why are these things so hard to come by? Like why, why, why is it so hard to get this information, you know, when you need it? Like, why do you have to go to the effort to, before now, go to the effort to do it all yourself? Um, we want to do it for you and make it super easy. So I'm excited about that new resource. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm trying to think if I have anything like fun to share with you. Um, one of the things I shared on the, uh, the Pitch Lab coaching call yesterday was that um, so much of what we're doing and our feeling about, um, why is this in preview mode? You guys can see me, right? It's super weird. Um, it says preview mode. This is new. I just updated the software and it looks totally different. I don't know why. Anyway, one of the, let me know if you can see me still. I don't know why it just says preview mode all of a sudden. Okay. Um, I guess I'm live. Uh, one of the, um, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> the um, aspects of what we do is, hi, Ashley. Okay, good. And you can hear me. Good. Um, one of the as one of the aspects of what we do is being convinced. It's I feel like PR is selling. You know, I really do feel like what we're doing is positioning our products. It's trying to find the right fit for them, and it's essentially selling. It's convincing an editor, or journalist that the story you're sharing is a good, you know, story angle for them. It's the right fit, and all of that. And there's this feeling of certainty, like. It's almost like manifestation. And if you're a little like, you know, freaked by the woo woo, you know, maybe this isn't for you, but I have found when I approach things as if they are a done deal, it's just a matter of when, but I'm already talking to myself as if it's happening or with that level of confidence, like, yeah, we're going to, you know, client wants to be in, in good housekeeping as one of their top 10, whatever in their space, it's going to like, it'll happen you know, definitely, like absolutely it's going to happen. But there's so many people in our community um, and other PR pros who feel like the sky is falling. They feel this like, well, nobody's replying to me. Um, PR's dying. Uh, it's so hard. Everything's pay to play. It's not. It is absolutely not. Um, and that's one of the reasons we have the Pitch Lab. <laughs> it's because we want to always give you the right strategies, things that are working right now, keep you in a community where other people are experiencing what you're experiencing so that you don't have this freak out where you're working kind of in a vacuum and total isolation. Like, why isn't anyone getting back to me? Ugh, like PR's dying, the media, um, they're non-responsive. They're It's a ghost town, it's crickets. That's negative energy and negative 
feeling, you know, that's negative thoughts and, and um, it'll affect your actions and it'll affect how passionately you're delivering your pitches and feeling like what you're saying to them is absolutely the right fit for them. And um, so anyway, we have been approaching it like this for a long time. And if it's anything, uh, oh, I love it, James. Yeah, pay to play is stupid, you guys. Um, it is stupid. And there's all these shady people that are like coming into my DMs. Like, do you know the power of PR? I'm like, do I know the power of PR? <laughs> like, so shady. Anyway, and they're like, pay, you know, we only get paid when you get featured. And it's like pay to play. It's gross. And it's not legit. That's not what we're doing around here. But my team has always known that we will get our client featured in the good housekeeping, um, you know, 10, uh, top 10 list. This is what they wanted and getting the ability to have that seal. Yes, you have to pay for it, but you don't have to pay to get on these lists. That's all searchable and all that. So we finally did it this week. Um, oh God. So Natasha saying she just did a TikTok video. Um, Natasha, post your um, TikTok handle or your link here because um, she has a really fast growing TikTok account where she's sharing a lot of PR advice and strategies in a really fun way. Um, and I guess she made a little shady TikTok um, video about the uh, shady. Did I say shady twice? Anyway, go check her out. Um, but... My, my team got our client on good housekeeping. Client is beside themselves. They're so happy. Natasha is legit on TikTok. Uh, and they then got it um, syndicated to BuzzFeed or one uh, Yahoo. I don't know. Um, and billions of impressions in like a matter of days. So they're so over the moon. And we worked on that for years. And it happened, you know. So... Great opportunities are worth waiting for, but um, that's a huge one, and it was obviously so worth the effort, but I think a lot of it really comes down to this confidence and not second-guessing your ability, not second-guessing that the media is open to hearing from you. Um, it's one of the reasons we also put together our media contacts database. So we have our own database. It's extremely affordable. We developed it, developed it for two reasons. One new PR pros who there are a lot in our community, they feel like they're not legit if they don't. Natasha is legit. She has a whole online presence. Natasha's legit. But a lot of new PR pros do not feel legit when they don't have access to Cision or Maltwater. And on our call yesterday, we were talking about the price and they're quoting PR professionals $10,000 a year now, which is insane. And you can always negotiate that, but that's intimidating. You know, Cision is wanting 10K. You can negotiate it. Maybe it's 5K. That's still a lot. You know, this is like under $300. And when I say you have access to the media, it is there to give you that confidence when you're pitching clients that you know you have an entire database of podcasts and editors in your niche that you can confidently reach out to. And that will enable you to convert more business. You'll so confidently sell your uh, services and expertise because you know you can reach the right people. And the second part that's so awesome about it is that our community members contribute to it. So we call it peer curated. Say that three times fast. I'm going to just post what I'm trying to say. Peer curated. I guess that's right. I don't know. Um, and what that means is that members like Elaine and Kelly and our other Elaine, um, Natasha, are submitting their contacts who are PR friendly. They have placed stories for them in the past. They're, they're you know, media friendly. It's like they're happy to hear from you, um, especially if you're pitching the right thing to them. You know, don't go rogue or whatever. But that's why we created that database so that it's not all the bells and whistles and all the nonsense you're paying extra for. And Kelly's saying, your list is actually responsive. I was beside myself when I got a message back from Kelly Clarkson's show within 24 hours of pitching. Wow. I haven't heard that yet, Kelly. That's awesome. 
I'm going to screenshot that. You guys know I like screenshot. Oops. Um, but how awesome is that? So it's the deal. It's like, are you going to, is this list current or is it like, you know, developed 10 years ago and nobody's there going out of their way to update it? I look at it like we are PR boots on the ground. We're in the trenches every day pitching these people. They are who are the gatekeepers that actually want to hear from us and um, they're responsive. So that's, you know, we may not have 50,000 contacts, but we have thousands and they're going to be responsive in your niche. So I love that. I love that for you. No, um, so just think about, that piece of it. It's that confidence. It's another reason why we put it together. That confidence where Kelly can say to a client, you know what, this would be a great fit for the Kelly Clarkson show. And I actually have a responsive contact, uh, contact there. So, um, that was developed to give you the confidence and help you sell through your services, give you access to the media, even if you're just starting out and you cannot afford 10 K a month, 5 K a couple hundred dollars a year, whatever, or a couple hundred dollars a month. Um, so that's why we did it. So anyway, that's what um, I have for you today. And um, if you have any questions about the upcoming webinar or any of our resources or what would be the right resource for you, I can definitely point you in the right direction. Um, I'm wearing a very cute jumpsuit today. I love myself a jumpsuit. I love, I love me a jumpsuit. Um, and, uh, any sort of adult onesie is super easy. Okay. Um, uh, let me just read the, ah. oh, wow. Yeah. Read Nelson's con contact here. Um, I don't believe Nelson has our contacts database. He's in Toronto. So it might not be the right fit, but one of our members got a call yesterday or got on a call with Muckrack. They were quoted five thousand, um, and he asked them to look up a contact that he knew left the station months ago, and the contact was still in their database. And he told the rep that this contact should not be there. She said she'd have them removed. I said that's the problem. You guys are not updating your database in a timely manner, and it's not my job to tell you this. It's your team's job to have that media contact removed the minute they leave that station, and that's what our um, members are doing. Like Elaine will send, Elaine uh, Marshall, who Nelson's talking to, talking about, will send us an email for one of her contacts that says, I'm on maternity leave. And it's like, I just emailed this person. She's on maternity leave. This is the contact to reach out to instead of her at this moment. And we will add that to our database. We're constantly changing it and editing it. It's a whole thing. Um, I actually have the actual numbers of how long we're spending. Let me see if I can pull that up on just that specific um, cert, like piece. Um, wait, hold on. Project prioritization. So what? Um, uh, oh, no, it's not here. These are, oh, yeah, it is. Um, uh, weekly, monthly. Oh my God. If you could only see how much time my team is spending on stuff. Um, oh my God. It's like per year, how much they're spending. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, we're definitely not making money on it. It is a, a service that we're, you know, it's just another, another way that we can support you in your career. So, um, yeah, I'm supposed to go through this list and like trim out the non-essentials because we have so much we're working on right now, especially with this like news that I'm so excited to share with you. Anybody have any like guesses? I don't know, just for fun. I'm, I don't mean to be coy, but it's like not, oh, you do have our database. Okay, awesome, Nelson. That's great. Yes. Okay, good. It's 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 helpful. Um, Muckrack requires journalists to update their profiles. When I was still a journalist, I would get emails asking if my profile was up to date. And if you're not responding, then it's then it's not, or if you've moved from that address that they're messaging you because you're no longer there, how would you know to update it? Catch 22, right? Um, any like wild guesses if I'm like, I have something I'm working on. If you have any like, just for fun, I don't know. And I know I'm on a little delay, so I'll stay here. I'm trying to see if I can actually find the exact amount. Oh, media content, okay. Oh, update, this is something we cannot adjust. 
media contacts database updates. So this isn't part of the like hours that I could trim. This is the non-negotiables. Um, all the media database companies should hire staff to use their telephone and update their media databases on a weekly basis. They don't do it because they're too lazy. And also, Nelson, it's expensive. It's expensive. So a lot of what we're doing here is crowdsourcing. You know, we're using our dialed in, tapped into the Pulse community to help us do that. You know, because it's a co-op. It's a co-op where everyone benefits from everybody else's insight and everyone else's access and contacts. You know, I'm so happy to share my contacts, um, you know, because other people are sharing theirs and it's like, oh yes, I've been trying to reach someone there and it hasn't been responsive from decision. I'm getting, you know, crickets, crickets to crushing it. Uh, and now, um, now I'm able to get somebody on the line, you know, or get somebody to re be responsive over email. Nobody has any guesses just for fun, Kelly. No fun guesses, Nelson, uh, Elaine, or um, Allie. Just curious. I'll tell you guys soon. Um, anyway, well, that's what I have. Ooh, and a sample request from the Today Show. See, you guys, it's all happening. Um, too bad it's that expensive. They should be doing it because we're paying um, a lot of hard-earned money. Oh, no, no. The... Um, <laughs> Are you saying a thousand hours in terms of like guesses on what, how much time we're spending on the database? Natasha, I mean, guesses on the big project that I have in the works and you can't say because you actually know. Uh, 10,000 hours. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything, but I'm excited. I'll share very, very soon. Um, yeah, anyway. Guys, that's what I have for you. Just know we are here to build your businesses add more resources, add more value, um, find you clients. <laughs> Journalists are slammed. Natasha's an angel. Journalists are slammed with stories and deadlines, though, too, so I don't slight them for not answering these emails or phone calls. It's just a flawed system. Yeah, it is, and we're looking to help it, fix it, you know, at least for our community, just um, in terms of access and all of us collaborative, helpful people who are the kind of PR professionals who want to share. They want to share their know-how. They want to help their peers. Um, you know, that's uh, what we're trying to create here. So um, anyway, guys, I am wrapping up this topic. But if you're interested in um, learning more about these editorial uh, what do we call them, um, execution plans, then, um, you know, let us know and I can tell you more about them. And also, if you want to know more about crickets to crushing it, um, let me know because it's going to be really good. Uh, can't We can outsource all of our work to you. <laughs> what do you mean? Um, uh, Kelly says, it's because you're amazing. I go to your database before my crack. That's super cool. Hi, Brittany. Good news. I raised my rate 3x and I have a new client for a six-month retainer. Brittany, you're in the agency accelerator, right? Make sure I'm not misquoting. This is the kind of stuff we do in the agency accelerator. Uh, Jane, absolutely not. <laughs> Don't outsource anything to me. Um, I'd like to know more about the editorial plan, the execution plans, um, inside the pitch lab. You know what? Um, join, uh, Kathleen, sign up for the, uh, way to go. Yeah. Brittany, tell me, don't just drop that bomb. And then let's see. Yes. And it's because of the agency accelerator. There you go. Two more wonderful clips. I get to clip. I know she told me that. We were um, dancing around the house. I share. I always share that stuff with my husband. He's like so just like, oh, my God, you get to just have such an impact. Like it's so great. People share their excitement with you. So we were dancing around. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, Kathleen, um, let me get you what you need here. Hold on one sec. Uh, so join the... Um, crickets to crushing it. 
and then you will learn more about it. And then I'm just going to quickly click you over to the pitch lab. Um, and it talks about the execution plans here. They're rad. They are so freaking good. And I don't know anything else available to PR professionals like this. So this is just more um, dialed in on uh, what is in the pitch lab. Um, the pitching roadmap is the, um, oh yeah, here's like uh, exactly um, monthly execution plans worth the price of the membership alone. This will pay for itself over and over again. Um, the roadmap is like the best program on soup to nuts on how to do PR. Um, I do need access to a lot of these resources. Gail, don't you have it? Are you in any of our programs yet? I'm sorry that I don't know for sure. You've been here for so long and I'm so grateful to you joining us every single week. I love seeing you on here. I think you and I are aligned on so many things and I feel like you would just super love our resources. Um, let me know if you need any guidance on where to go first or whatever, but um, but Kathleen, if you look at that and then scroll down, you'll see more about it. But if you don't want to like join that, just come to Crickets to Crushing It. And in all candor, guys, it's a free webinar where we talk about these approaches and model and all of the things that um, tie into all of this. There's like a five part pitch, P-I-T-C-H, da, da, da. Um, yes, the roadmap is in the pitch lab. That's a compre comprehensive program on how to do PR. Um, and Ashley, I'll tell you that this used to be called um, Press Success. It was the first program I created. I poured probably three years of my heart and soul weekends, nights with new babies creating that program. And it was really good, but it was geared towards experts and brands so that they could do PR themselves. And then I quickly realized my passion is really connecting with others in the PR community and like helping them build their businesses. So we completely retooled that program. And now we call it um, the Roadmap and the Pitch Lab. We used to sell it at one time, it was $3,000. And we now having access for PR professionals to this, it's geared towards you providing the service for your clients. The Pitch Lab is like 97 bucks a month. Um, and if you stay in for two months because you get it, I think, dripped out over week by week. So in two months, you have access to the whole roadmap and you could have gone through it. That's under $200. And then you can cancel. Like, I don't, if you're like, I don't need this anymore. But people stay for the coaching calls, the master classes, and the monthly execution plans. Um, okay, good. Gaining so much more practical insight from you. These are all really good comments. Um, but yes, so we have inside the pitch lab. It's like, I mean, it's such a no-brainer expense in your business. Such a no, I mean, it's a no-brainer. And we, you can do an annual membership for less than a thousand dollars a year. And then you get our um, media contacts database. So that way it's a savings of like over $500. Um, for the year. You save, you know, 500 bucks for the year if you join for a year. Um, and I think it's so worth it. So, uh, does anybody have any more questions on anything? Blah, blah, blah. Um, awesome, Brittany. I'm so proud of you. That's so incredible. And I bet you when you raise your rates, those clients, they don't, you know, the new clients, they don't bat an eye. They don't know where you were before. And I bet you the ones that are paying a higher rate are going to be a lot better behaved. Um, yes, the pitch lab is totally separate from the agency accelerator. So think of it like this. If you go to that link I gave you, we show you a roadmap. It's like your success path. The pitch lab teaches you the service, the skill, like what it is you're providing to your clients, how to be the best public relations expert, specialist, converting more pitches for your clients so you get amazing results. That's the skill, the service you're learning in the pitch lab. The agency accelerator is how you grow and scale your own PR agency. It's based on four pillars, strategy, sales, service, and scale. Um, and it is proven, like I've had hundreds of people go through it. Um, you're seeing here, I mean, Natasha Kelly and Brittany, of course, sharing her expertise here. Um, 
or, and you know, her results of what she was able to do in a very short, and very short period of time. Um, but it's literally Kathleen, a business in a box. So it's taking the skill you learn or hone in the pitch lab and then using it to intentionally and strategically build an agency or a business, um, providing that service on your terms. It's very intentional. Um, I'm a mom. I got two boys. My older son's on the spectrum. It's a full, full-time other job. And I'm also running an agency full-time. I have a team, of course. But so um, this has to work around my life. And it has to be something that if you're a parent or busy or you have other interests, which I hope you do, and you don't want to be working all the time, but you want to be doing work that you love that lights you up, the Agency Accelerator is designed to create an agency or a business providing PR and other services around what you love to do. What's your zone of genius? What are you passionate about? I've had my agency this month. Um, March is 17 years since 2005. So um, March 2005, I started my business. So, And I still love it so much. I love the beauty and cosmetics industry. I love the baby and kids industry. We're known in our spaces. We get clients seeking us out. We charge premium retainers. That's what I'm looking to get you to achieve. So that's hopefully explaining the two different um, programs, but they're both excellent. Thank you, Stephanie. Nice to see you. Um, they're both excellent. I swear to you, I would not put my name on anything that wasn't the absolute best out there. Like, I do not believe there are any other training programs out there on this stuff, on the internet, as good as ours. And I can confidently say that. Um, and I'm not like bragging or boasting. There is a lot that goes into this and it's not all coming from me. There's a whole team, a lot of time, money, effort, energy, blah, 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 blah. And the thing that I'm working on right now that I hope will happen tomorrow and we can announce next week is even more of that for you guys. Get you more money, get you you know, working in businesses you love. So um, I've said this 10 times, so I'll say it one last time. That's what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for being here. I am so grateful for all of you joining me every week. I have my regulars interacting. Let's have conversations. These editorial calendars are immensely helpful. They really show you're in the know and we take all of it and we curate it and we put it in a very easy presentation for you in our monthly execution plans in the pitch lab. If you bill your, let's say you consider your rate 90, 100 um, bucks an hour, let's say. Uh, I hope it's more, but let's say your rate is $100 an hour. Think of an hour of your time pulling, oh good, Nelson's going to be at our monthly or our quarterly mixer and our webinar. So webinars next week. And then I have two weeks off because of spring break. And then I'll be back for my, my weekly. Anyway, just leaving you on this note, you cannot do all the things in your business, nor should you figure out how you value your time and what an hour of your time costs. If it is more than $97, one hour of your time, more than $97. The plans you're gonna get, these execution plans, the amount of time you would have to put into just pulling the editorial calendars from publications is gonna be way more than one hour of your time. And you get the execution plans and then some for 97 bucks a month. So if it can save you one hour of your time, you already have come out ahead. And I promise you, it will help you sell more business, be more effective. It's, it's so good. Okay. Anyway, I'll see you next week, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Tell one friend about Profitable PR Pros or invite one friend to our webinar. Anyone in PR, anyone who's in social media or a VA that wants to add maybe PR services to their business because it's very profitable, especially when you do it the right way. Okay. Invite your friends. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next. Well, I'll see you next week at 1 PM Pacific for crickets to crushing it. Bye guys. Thanks so much.